Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sangeeta Chaudhary and once again I welcome everybody to my lecture class. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about hyperbilirubinemia. What is hyperbilirubinemia? It causes an evaluation of a case of hyperbilirubinemia. Now, what is it? Hyperbilirubinemia means raised serum level of bilirubin. As you all know, bilirubin is of two variety. One is conjugated bilirubin, the other one is unconjugated bilirubin. So, when we start evaluating a case of hyperbilirubinemia, the first step is identification whether it is a case of conjugated or direct hyperbilirubinemia or is it a case of unconjugated or indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Now, from where does hyperbilirubinemia result? It results from overproduction of bilirubin, impaired hepatic uptake of bilirubin, impaired hepatic conjugation of bilirubin, impaired excretion of bile into the canaliculi and regurgitation of the bilirubin back into the serum. So these are the causes of hyperbilirubinemia. In my previous lecture, I have already discussed bilirubin metabolism and its excretion. So if uh, we had followed this class, now this class becomes very easy to understand. Unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia results from overproduction of bilirubin, reduced hepatic uptake of bilirubin and impaired conjugation of bilirubin. Conjugated hyperbilirubinemia results from reduced excretion of bilirubin and due to regurgitation of bilirubin back into the serum. So these are the etiology or we can say etiopathogenesis of hyperbilirubinemia. Now, second step in the evaluation of hyperbilirubinemia is evaluation of other biochemical liver tests. Other than bilirubin, there are a number of parameters in liver function tests like different enzymes, aspartate transaminase, alanine transaminase, okay, then uh, alkaline phosphatase, then gamma glutamyl transferase. There are many other parameters which we should evaluate when we evaluate a case of hyperbilirubinemia. Now coming to the causes of hyperbilirubinemia. First, let's discuss about the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia. That means only the bilirubin is raised but other liver enzymes are within normal limit. So a case of unconjugated isolated hyperbilirubinemia may result from hemolytic disorders, okay, acquired hemolytic disorders like paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, that is PNH, hemolytic uremic syndrome, or maybe sparsal anemia, immune hemolysis. These are the acute hemolytic disorders which may result in unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Ineffective erythropoiesis as a result of deficiency of folate, iron, or cobalamin may result in unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, increased production due to massive blood transfusion and resorption of a massive hematoma may result in unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Certain drugs like rifampine and proben acid, they reduce the hepatic uptake of bilirubin thereby resulting in hyperbilirubinemia. And lastly, coming to the inherited conditions of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, that is Krigler nazar syndrome type 1 and 2 and Gilbert syndrome. I will discuss about this syndrome in my next class. Anyway, so these are the causes of isolated unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Now, coming to the causes of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia where there is isolated rise of direct serum bilirubin. The causes are mainly of two uh, syndrome that is Dubin Johnson syndrome and Roto syndrome. Okay, I will discuss about this syndrome in my upcoming classes. So, these are the causes of isolated hyperbilirubinemia. Now, other causes of hyperbilirubinemia where there are abnormalities of other biochemical parameters of liver function okay there may be raised enzymes okay there may be coagulation disorder okay so these can be divided again into two classes one is hepatocellular dysfunction the other one is cholestatic conditions so hepatocellular dysfunction can be in terms of viral hepatitis it can be autoimmune hepatic diseases it can be due to wilson's disease or it can be due to exposure to certain toxins so many diseases can lead to hepatocellular dysfunction thereby leading to hyperbilirubinemia 
cholestatic condition now cholestatic condition can be um, intrahepatic cholestasis or extrahepatic cholestasis okay now intrahepatic cholestasis may be due to viral hepatitis may be due to alcoholic hepatitis liver cirrhosis of other causes it can be due to toxins and so many other conditions primary biliary cirrhosis primary sclerosis and cholangitis these are causes of intrahepatic cholestasis extrahepatic cholestasis can be due to certain benign condition or it can be due to different malignant condition as well okay so uh, in the benign condition it may be due to cholidocolithiasis or it may be uh, biliary strictures which has developed post surgery okay then ascariasis can lead to extrahepatic cholestasis malignant conditions like cholangiocarcinoma carcinoma of gallbladder carcinoma of pancreas carcinoma uh, ampullary carcinoma these all may result in cholestatic jaundice okay or cholestatic hyperbilirubinemia so not going into the detail of the causes i have just mentioned what could be the causes of uh, hepatocellular dysfunction and cholestatic condition leading to hyperbilirubinemia now the most important part of this class evaluation of a case of hyperbilirubinemia now once a patient has come to you with jaundice or ecturus take a good history don't forget about medication or drug use which can lead to hyperbilirubinemia do a thorough physical examination to find out any uh, you know any systemic uh, problem you can uh, diagnose from physical examination then do a liver function test now in the liver function test if there is isolated increase in serum bilirubin then you can divide the condition into two variety that is where there is indirect hyperbilirubinemia and direct hyperbilirubinemia when we say it is an indirect hyperbilirubinemia when direct bilirubin level is less than 15 percent of the total bilirubin then it is indirect hyperbilirubinemia if it is more than 15 percent then it will be called as direct hyperbilirubinemia so two common causes of direct hyperbilirubinemia is dubin johnson syndrome and rota syndrome now indirect hyperbilirubinemia may result from different drug use like rifampin and proben acid which reduces hepatic uptake of bilirubin inherited conditions of indirect hyperbilirubinemia can be gilbert syndrome and krigler nazar syndrome and overproduction of bilirubin may also result in indirect hyperbilirubinemia like in cases of hemolytic disorder and ineffective erythropoiesis so these are the causes of indirect hyperbilirubinemia which should be ruled out or evaluated now on the other hand there may be rise in serum bilirubin along with rise in other liver enzymes when we do a biochemical uh, parameter test now what happens in those cases okay when bil not only bilirubin but other liver parameters also derange then we need to divide this condition into two pattern one is hepatocellular pattern of dysfunction the other one is cholestatic pattern of dysfunction Hepatocellular pattern means what? Hepatocellular pattern means when the rise of alanine minotransferase and aspartate minotransferase is out of proportion to the rise of alkaline phosphatase and just the opposite will be cholestatic pattern that is alkaline phosphatase is raised out of proportion to alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase now if we find that there is an hepatocellular pattern of involvement then what we should do we should evaluate for viral hepatitis viral serology for hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c virus to be done toxicology screening to be done for example acetaminophen level should be checked then serum ceruloplasmin level to be checked if the age of the uh, concerned person is less than 40 years then for autoimmune hepatitis we need to look for ANA and then SMA okay so these are the parameters we should look for if there is an hepatocellular pattern of jaundice now if these are negative then what should be done next if these are negative then go for additional virologic testing test for cytomegalovirus dna for cytomegalovirus then capsid antigen for epstein bar virus then hepatitis d viral serology to be looked for and igm for hepatitis e virus to be looked for if again these 
all are negative then go for a liver biopsy and identify the cause of hyperbilirubinemia okay so these are about the hepatocellular pattern of hyperbilirubinemia now if there is a cholestatic pattern from liver function test where alkaline phosphatase is raised out of proportion to alt and ast then what you should do next go ahead with an ultrasonography of abdomen now if in the ultrasonography there are dilated ducts okay then go for a CT scan or MRCP or ERCP. Dilated duct means there is extra hepatic cholestasis. Now, to identify extra hepatic causes of cholestasis, we need to go ahead with the CT abdomen, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, that is MRCP, and endoscopic resonance cholangiopancreatography, that is ERCP. So, these will help us in the diagnosis of extra hepatic causes of extra hepatic cholestasis. Now, if the ducts are not dilated, that means there is intrahepatic cholestasis. So, to find out the cause of intrahepatic cholestasis, go ahead with serological testing for viral hepatitis. Do an AMA, that is anti-mitochondrial antibody. If it is positive, that means the patient has primary biliary cirrhosis. And review the history of different drug use, which are hepatotoxic. Now, if these all are negative, then go ahead with an MRCP or liver biopsy to identify the cause of hyperbilirubinemia and if AMA is positive suppose AMA is positive then again confirm your diagnosis with liver biopsy okay so this is how you're going to evaluate a case where there is cholestatin pattern okay in the liver function test so uh, I hope this explains how you evaluate a case of hyperbilirubinemia let's revise it in a nutshell take a good history physical examination do a liver function test and now divide the cases into two variety where there is isolated rise in bilirubin and where there is uh, rise of liver enzymes along with the bilirubin isolated rise in bilirubin can be of two variety indirect hyperbilirubinemia direct hyperbilirubinemia causes of direct hyperbilirubinemia can be dubin johnson and rota syndrome Indirect hyperbilirubinemia causes the have already mentioned drugs, inherited conditions and then hemolytic disorders. Now, where there is along with bilirubin other liver parameters also deranged, it can be of two patterns, hepatocellular pattern, cholestatic pattern. Hepatocellular pattern where ALT, ASD are raised out of proportion to ALP. Now, evaluate the case for viral serology, toxicology screen, serum ceruloplasmin, ANA, SMA. If these are negative, then go for additional virological testing. If these are also negative, go ahead with a liver biopsy. If there is cholestatic pattern, go ahead with an ultrasonography abdomen. Find out if the ducts are dilated. If ducts are dilated, this is a case of extra hepatic cholestasis. Go ahead with CT, MRCP, ERCP to find out the cause. If ducts are not dilated, then it's a case of intrahepatic cholestasis. Then go ahead with serological testing for viral hepatitis. AMA, review history for drugs. If these are negative, again, go ahead with MRCP or liver biopsy to find out the causes. And if AMA is positive, it is probably a case of primary biliary cirrhosis then confirm your diagnosis with liver biopsy so this is how you should really proceed for a case of hyperbilirubinemia i hope this class is helpful to you uh, thank you so much for attending the class